Hey, wow, Defunto, John Akpaji, by Hano Tukti, 912, it is Friday. Friday, woo, fitness! Uh, January 28th, yeah, still January, almost there, though. Tomas Maglotnia, our regional correspondent, just really great coverage of everything that's going on uh, uh, in the CNMI, from the spread of the COVID-19 virus to the spread of the political drama. I think the spread of the political drama might be worse than the COVID right now. Uh, but uh, we're going to turn it over for this uh, next interview to Tomas. Good morning, Tomas, and thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning, uh, Guam, CNMI. Good morning, Governor Ralph Torres. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to The Link. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Tough day at Tito. And so uh, I'm sure uh, this is the first time we're getting a chance to speak with you after uh, the news of... Uh, uh, of the impeachment by the House of Representatives. Uh, you are now the second governor in CNMI history to be impeached by the House. Uh, what's your comment? And uh, given that it's been a few days, weeks now since that has happened, uh, uh, how have things impacted uh, also the work at your uh, at the government? Well, for my work, uh, it doesn't impact anything. Uh, I knew I knew that that's their their priority, um, and so. Uh, just looking at the way they did things, um, again, uh, they may not be happy of what I purchased, uh, but definitely not things illegal in that matter. Uh, and if you look at all their claims, uh, why did they give me $75,000 for my operation, my official representation? So for everybody that's listening, they go out there and they make a big issue about my purchases. But then during budget, they give me again $75,000. Um, Gary Camacho, CUC, went on testified. He testified and said that the government did not pay a penny on any of my private accounts. Um, yet they put that on the one of the articles. So I know um, that is strictly political. And... Uh, so therefore, what I do, it doesn't change when my priorities uh, here in Sinomai. Um, I continue to, to make sure the retirees get their pension, their 100%, uh, and make sure that, uh, for example, look at the bonus. I offered the retirees first to get their bonus over the holidays, and yet the leadership uh, ignored it. Um, and up to now, uh, the retirees haven't gotten their bonuses. So you can see that their priorities is not the retirees nor the community. Their priorities to just find something uh, and to impeach me. So again, um, I know what I've done. Um, I go back to my trip to, to the Northern Islands with Dear Meat for dinner. We brought over 25, 30 million views here in the CNMI. What have they done? What have they done to promote the CNMI? either any of them please come out and say i have done this to promote the cinema and this is the the attraction i got to promote cinema second thomas all of you know that here in the cinema when pandemic came in i was the one on forefront with with gar patrick guerrero warren villa gomez or task force esther munia the doctors nurses i mean i can go on and on on the first, um, he, uh, the first um, meeting we held at World Resort, the first letter that I wrote to the president, um, asking him to shut down our airport, um, first PPEs that we, we purchased, uh, ventilators, every flight that came in uh, on the airport on our cargo, who was there? I was there. None of those that, that, that talked uh, was even close, remotely close, or even offered any, any help or assistance. They were nowhere to be found. And is that type of leader you want? Um, and for, for them to say that I left my people, I mean, come on, uh, be realistic. We've broken every record on, on pandemic, on how safe CNMI was, and, uh, and yet they don't acknowledge that. Um, uh, you, uh, it, it's, 
uh, you are the, again the second governor to be impeached. Uh, I've had the chance to interview you when you were in the Senate, uh, and also when you uh, you were sworn in as lieutenant governor. Uh, what's your reflection on that? Did you imagine yourself to be found in this position when you first started? I can't imagine that you did. No, I mean, I don't think any governor would imagine that they'll be impeached, right? Uh, I mean, that's the reality. But looking at their priorities, uh, it's strictly political. So they've taken all my documents, uh, yet um, they act like they're judges and they're lawyers uh, and arbitrarily decide that uh, I violated certain things when in reality I haven't. And Governor, uh, I'm sure you've seen the articles and uh, we've covered your video responses to the specific allegations, especially when it comes to uh, the boat trips and the, util uh, the utility costs. Uh, I just wanted to run some of the figures by you. So they, they charge you with uh, mm -hmm. uh, excess of 177000 in taxpayer-funded utility benefits, uh, $16,000 of uh, CNMI taxpayer-funded uh, mm -hmm. Uh, public funds to for airfare stipend and lodging uh, to attend political campaign events in one case uh, they even here note uh, $399 breakfast in Washington DC and so if they're basing their uh, allegations based on documents that are black and white what is your response then are they looking at or what where did they come up with this no, I mean, are those purchases done? Are those, so where does 177,000, where did they go? Right? So if Gary Camacho came out and said, as the director, that I didn't benefit, I didn't do anything wrong, or the government didn't pay anything more than what I used, and that it was fixed, whatever that issue is, it was fixed. So if, if you subpoena Gary Camacho as uh, the executive director, and says that claim that the government did not pay a penny more than what I used, then what is their claim? They're not satisfied with that? So why bring in, why subpoena Gary Camacho? I thought this whole thing is to clarify that. So if you again um, brought in the executive director to ask questions, he clearly says the government did not pay anything more than what the governor uses and any other accounts has been rectified. Why is that part of the articles of impeachment? Second, on my trips to DC, all the, the lunch or breakfast or, or whatever it is, that was done through through official representation to represent CNMI uh, when I go out there and I meet with either consultants, firms uh, to assist on the issues here. But Thomas, my whole trip, I don't, I don't enjoy going to DC. I mean, that's a 38, 40 hour trip, but I have to go there to represent where there's 902 talk, uh, where there's to lobby for our CW uh, or any other federal issues that we have here. And Governor, uh, some of these charges have been characterized as you living a lavish, luxurious lifestyle uh, while you're governor as the top executive. Would you agree with that classification? Have you been living a luxurious, lavish lifestyle as the top executive? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I live just the way uh, I do um, on those trips that I've taken. I believe that I've taken it in the best interest of the cinema. Um, look at one of the, the dinners that they make an issue. After Typhoon U2, there was what, four or five companies out of Guam that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars contributing, donating, what, four or five 40 foot containers Imagine the, the volunteer that has happened out of Guam, the soft heart, the good heart of people of Guam to contribute, to come down to help our brothers and sisters here in Ireland. And that, that one evening, they asked me to have dinner with them. And I say, you know what? This is a dinner, let, let the government pay for this. And yet they make an issue about that. Is that how we treat our brothers and sisters after helping contribute hundreds of thousands of dollars? So again, you look at that picture, Thomas, and how they portray that. They don't say thank you, all the companies, all those volunteers, and for what this one dinner, but yet it's lavish. And Governor, I wanted to ask you, uh, you said that nothing you've done is illegal. Do you believe anything you've done uh, in these charges are perhaps unethical? I don't think so. 
I mean, like again, uh, purchases, was purchases made? Yes. Was it given to the department? Yes. Or different entities? Thomas, I was in Guam, I was in Hawaii uh, on medical referral. I purchased what? I believe seven or eight computers. On my own money, I purchased it because the, the computers, there's been what, over 10 years. And I came back here and I reimbursed it. So, I mean, those purchases that I've made, I've made all kinds of different purchases. The gun, for example, gun case. I purchased that gun case and I gave it to the Public of Public Work, uh, DPS. Uh, one of the burners there with the dry foods. Um, I gave it to public safety, boating safety. They didn't ask where that came from. So if I was to purchase and give it to the departments, is that unethical? And Governor, I just also wanted to, to ask you about the contempt charge that the uh, committee uh, brought forward in, in which you, uh, through your counsel, uh, filed a lawsuit. Uh, Timothy Bellis, a former judge, is now uh, presiding over that. What's the latest with that, and are you still moving forward with the lawsuit given that the impeachment already happened? Well, uh, yes, um, because there's there's a point here, uh, Thomas. There's a, an, a, a very critical and important uh, statement here that the, there's a separate branch of government. And I've said this in the legislature. If you invite me to come in, I would come in. But yet they subpoena me when they don't have the subpoena power to subpoena a governor to come in, um, let alone um, those within, um, within the office. So um, it is important that we don't set a wrong precedent on the governor's position. Not just the governor, just not me personally, but the position itself needs to be protected. And uh, before we ask you uh, about uh, the election year that is uh, that we're in right now, I did want to ask you about the Senate process for uh, the impeachment trial. We know that uh, your running mate, Senator Vinny Sablon, is also a sitting senator who will be one of the nine who will ultimately also vote uh, uh, to convict or, uh, or, or not uh, in, in the Senate. Uh, you said that you trust that you're going to receive a fair process there. Many people say that uh, it's unlikely because uh, it is a Republican-led Senate. Uh, what's your comment uh, on how things might play out in the Senate, and have you, to, have you talked to any of the uh, senators about it? No, I mean, uh, I do talk to him, but not on this specific issue. Um, uh, so, again, um, I know how I was treated in the House, obviously. Um, there was no fairness in, in that process. Um, so uh, I just know that uh, I've been in the Senate. I've been part of that uh, that issue. Uh, and I do believe that uh, the senators uh, are very much fair and they look at every um, articles and they'll address it accordingly. And Governor, is it correct? We, we found in our uh, reporting that you dr helped draft some of the Senate rules for uh, the um, uh, impeachment trial for uh, Governor Fittel in 2013. Obviously, that didn't happen because he resigned. Uh, and so the 20 2013 rules you crafted, uh, would you support adopting those rules that you crafted it for your impeachment trial? Because no. the Senate says that they would rather not see that happen. No, because it's different. Every case is different. Um, the issues that uh, the, 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 uh, the former governor went through is different. Uh, and so I remember for us, uh, again, uh, we were going uh, to try to set the right precedent, the right foundation, um, and that didn't happen because uh, former governor resigned. So the, um, it's important that they look at uh, this uh, impeachment and how it was done and have uh, the senators uh, uh, come up with their own rules and policies and regulation on how to address it. And I did want to uh, also uh, ask you about the current um, COVID-19 uh, response and also how it has been impacting the CNMI economy. Uh, we've gotten the report of a $42 million deficit, uh, given that ARPA is also at play, uh, you know, nearly $500 million. Uh, what's your strategy to address the current COVID surge and then also, uh, are, can the public expect to see uh, specifics with, regar with regards to ARPA spending? Well, so, so Thomas, again, um, you know, with, with COVID, as you know, uh, we've been 
very safe here in Cedar Mai. Um, and this is something that none of us can can stop. Uh, and we know it was coming. And that's why we put so hard into um, having the community heard, um, get vaccinated. So we are proud to say that we're about 98% here in the Cedar Mai based on the last uh, consensus. Um, unfortunately, uh, we are, I think, at 23rd, uh, 24th death uh, as of today, and we're about 4,000 positive cases. Um, we hope that this uh, would reduce, uh, but uh, we continue to talk to uh, CEO and the task force uh, how to address this. Uh, we've been changing our protocols, but ultimately um, the end game here is to have everybody get vaccinated and uh, and continue to, to practice the three W's and stay home as much as you can. And can you address concerns about sole source contracts? And I mean, I think I saw recently one of those uh, sanitation of uh, agencies uh, that might have ties to one of your brothers with regards to getting paid thousands of dollars for sanitation. So I think Jogo and they're getting, you know, at some point like 170, you know, some thousands of dollars in amount for, uh, you know, days of work. Uh, can you address those uh, concerns? Well, I think that was uh, that one. I think it's best to ask uh, the task force or Homeland Security, uh, those that actually did the contract and those that actually uh, go to the departments ask the departments that, that uh, got services from them. Ask them how was their service? How, how was that service uh, brought to their department? Uh, for me, uh, again, uh, services across, uh, whether uh, it's sanitation or any other services, um, if they do it right, then they do it right. Uh, if there's any question, then you have the attorney general to look into it, OPA looks into it, uh, and the department who sign uh, on that behalf. So it doesn't matter whether it's Jogo or any other company. Um, do they did they do the service? Was the service satisfied? Uh, was their billing uh, done right? I mean, those are the questions uh, that should be asked, not just who owns it. And uh, Governor, I did want to shift to uh, the upcoming uh, election uh, that we've been reporting on extensively. We've had all the candidates uh, uh, and now yourself on the show. Uh, we did want to play part uh, of our story from yesterday uh, with uh, Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios. So uh, we just wanted to play that before we uh, talk about uh, the upcoming election. Here's that story. Uh, it's Doris Palacios and sometimes I cringe. You know, uh, it's Doris Palacios and sometimes I cringe. Sometimes I cringe like, you know, what did I get myself into? Well, Lieutenant Governor Arnold you know, Palacios wearing uh, regret on his sleeve his name attached to his former running mate, Ralph Torres, who was the second governor in CNMI history to be impeached by the House of Representatives. Palacios says he often watched Torres' actions in office in dismay. There are times when I tell the governor, hey, uh, love, I don't, I don't think you should do that. I think you should clear it with finance or even with the attorney general's office. You know, what am I going to do, force him? Palacios is now in full force, coming out swinging, serving a political one-two punch, launching his campaign for the executive seat with Saipan Mayor David Apatang after testifying before the legislative committee that brought the six articles of impeachment to the floor. His words in the House may bleed into the impending Senate impeachment trial. I would not uh, Answer uh, whether they should convict them. I think they should look at all. I, I, if anything, I, I believe that they should look at all the evidence. Palacios uh, shares speculation that the Republican-led Senate will not remove the governor from office. The ultimate referendum will perhaps be on Election Day in November. Tomas Mang Talk about Election Day in November. And uh, and your sitting <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, uh, Governor Torres, uh, it's no secret that uh, you've iced each other out in the administration, essentially. Uh, he said he cringes when he thinks about the Torres Palacios ticket that was the original bid. What's your response to Palacios? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not known to be throwing punches. Uh, and uh, I'm amazed that uh, he would come out like that. Uh, again, uh, 
I mean, he ran uh, as a lieutenant governor once when he was a speaker. Um, and I was a, a freshman in, in, in the house. Um, obviously, um, he lost. And then um, I got the opportunity uh, to the lady news to run uh, as his lieutenant governor. And then uh, it was my choosing to choose him as a lieutenant governor. If there's any cringes that supposed to have, it should be me. Um, obviously, all this progress. Uh, so the first two years, everything has been fine, dandy. Everything's been good. Governor Torres, you've done a great job. Governor Torres, I echo your, your progress. We have done great here in the Torres uh, Palacios administration. Then he decides to run. And when he decides to run, everything is bad. All the progress is now not a progress. Um, all the, the, the roles that we've done, um, we're doing Route 36, uh, the inner island between uh, Bird Island and Kingfisher. Uh, that's not progress. So for him, I mean, I expect that. I mean, he's running. He wants my position. Um, and so everybody knows in the cabinet, Tom, everybody knows I've always given him the respect every time um, on proclamations, in everything. And so there's not one person can say that I disrespected him in any matter. Uh, but this is the route that he chose. Um, and that's not going to deter me from what I am chosen and voted for as a governor. And I'll continue to be the governor uh, until the community says otherwise. I will continue to protect our elderly, continue to push for their full pension, uh, continue to push uh, bonuses if we can, uh, continue to, to give opportunities uh, to high school graduates and to fight for economy, uh, continue to build our relationship with uh, our federal partners, uh, our business communities here. Uh, and I am, I will continue to do that. I am more, more committed uh, to do that. And uh, talking about uh, your campaign and your commitments, uh, also uh, you, uh, your chief of, chief of staff and your uh, the GOP campaign chair, Will Castro, sharing with us uh, yesterday uh, the news of 400 people gathering uh, for uh, your uh, Stronger, uh, Together Stronger Headquarters uh, opening. Uh, uh, we're going to speak with uh, uh, the GOP uh, President Candace uh, Sellis next week in terms of the road ahead. Uh, given that uh, you have uh, some Republicans also in the legislature who are supporting the Palacios Apatang ticket and also the historic ticket of Sablan and Staffler, uh, what is your strategy moving ahead for re-election? Uh, what do the next few months look like to ensure that your campaign is a successful one? Uh, Thomas, uh, thank you for asking that question. First, I uh, continue to do what I've done uh, to get elected here. Uh, I got here uh, and continue to do how I got here, is to care for our people, continue to care for them, provide them opportunities, uh, increase, uh, get into our economy, uh, and try to bring in as much tourists as we can. I mean, at the end of the day, we want the lifestyle uh, to increase, protect our retirees again, uh, and give opportunities to our younger generation. So I'll take the same action, same route uh, that got me here from House, uh, Senate, Lieutenant, and then uh, Governorship. It's and, the love of my people. And what will your approach be uh, if reelected or in the remainder of your term uh, to address uh, the really hard situation that people find themselves in, uh, you know, the federal funds are not limitless. Uh, what's your approach to um, spending, uh, hiring, uh, bringing back tourism in a way that makes sense, given that COVID doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon? So, so Thomas, you know, I, I'm actually happy that you, you, you asked that question because since the pandemic came in, Okay, we have been focusing on our Governance Economic Council of Advisor on what we should do while downtime is here. So we've been putting and so many renovations uh, to make CNMI a world class destination. We have over 80, imagine this, over 80 companies, nonprofit organizations have signed an MOA with the Governance Economic Council for five years to designated areas of tourism, whether it's sidewalk, medium, 
or, or tourist sites. I mean, that's partnership. You've never hear, heard that um, anywhere uh, in the history of CNMI. So if you want to talk about somebody that's progressing in making sure that, that there is a strong foundation for to bring back the, our economy through tourism, this is it. Um, look at the House representative, for example. They cut down the MVA. You have a candidate that's running for governor. Cut down MVA budget. Now, how do you bring in tourism if you're cutting down MVA budget? So you're asking me how? This is it. We need to bring in our tourism. We need to go back and entice other uh, countries uh, to come in, whether Australia, um, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, Taiwan. Uh, but always make sure that we want to focus also on our Korean and our Japanese market. And uh, if China opens uh, any time, then uh, that's something that we should also look into. But right now we're focusing on our Korean market uh, as well as our Japanese when they're ready and new destinations. So we've been working really hard, uh, Senator Vinny and I have uh, been working hard with the, uh, on this issue. Uh, we know that we don't have the population uh, to sustain our economy. And that's that's why, first and foremost, we need to bring back our tourism industry. And Governor, it's been, uh, I think, a month since we, uh, you know, thank you so much for coming on our show, but are you going to bring back your press conferences as well, the weekly press conferences? Yeah, uh, we'll be going that, that next week. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add, your message to the community uh, during these uh, times? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, b both busy on the COVID end, but also on the political front. Well, I would like to, to thank uh, thank you and thank KUM for giving me this opportunity uh, and to everyone that's listening. Um, you guys know, um, you know, you don't change history, right? And I say that because uh, during pandemic, all of you, the whole community, whether it's Guam or, or Sinama, and I'm not one to go and say, I've done this, I've done that. But I do know that I care for my people. And I will do everything I can to be in the forefront on any disaster. And I've seen it, I've done it. So, so did Lord, Typhoon Mankut, Typhoon U2, and now the pandemic. I remember my, I would come, in, uh, come home, my kids would be crying. Why? Why that? You tell everybody to stay home, but yet you leave. Because I want to be out there with our first responders. I want them to know that their leader is right next to them, sacrificing, doing the hard work, not sitting down in the aircon, um, watching TV. And so for the people, Thank you so much, Governor, and uh, we hope to keep in touch and have you on our program uh, more in the future. All right, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, KUM. All right, there you go. Uh, see you my Governor Ralph Torres. Tom, some of the take Tomas, some of the takeaways. It seems that he's holding his ground yeah. uh, and uh, continues to say the question uh, all of the also other department heads and directors who have maybe created the atmosphere for all of this to come together as a perfect storm. Uh, of course, coming off uh, not just natural disasters for typhoons, but also the pandemic and this election year, which is charged given the uh, also uh, conflicts within his own, his own administration. So... Right, seemed fired up. Uh, definitely uh, looked like uh, he thought about what he was going to say and, and said it. Yeah, and continues to say that uh, all of the evidence uh, that the uh, committee gathered is uh, misleading. And uh, he looks forward to his uh, Senate trial, which we'll know more about uh, next Thursday. And uh, we actually got a chance. Uh, it's, it's streamed on our... Uh, Facebook page, uh, the uh, 
press conference with uh, Senate President Jude Hofschneider, who assigned a joint committee to review the rules and review the House resolution and the evidence and to create those rules. And uh, we'll see what uh, manifests out of that by next Thursday. Uh, it was also interesting how he addressed the Dermot uh, for a dinner thing and uh, how he uh, said and defended it by saying that uh, it brought a lot of uh, eyes to the CNMI. Right. And we've covered his response to each of the allegations uh, throughout uh, the last two years. Uh, we also did a whole 30 minute uh, episode on Pacific Matters uh, detailing uh, all of this, everything we just laid out. So uh, his responses were the same today with regards to uh, how things were handled in his administration. Uh, he doesn't think he's lived a lavish, luxur luxurious lifestyle uh, on taxpayers' dime. He doesn't think he did anything illegal or uh, unethical. Uh, and he's uh, forging ahead with a uh, new campaign for re-election for himself and now his uh, uh, running mate, Senator Vinny Saban, who, by the way, if uh, he's listening or anyone else out there, we'd you know, also invite him on the link. We've had All every time, other candidate. Yeah. Yep, yep, and yep. so, uh, uh, yes, uh, no, no shortage of uh, questions to ask, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, thank the governor for making time to, to be on the show. You asked all the questions you wanted to ask? There's always more questions. Uh, of course there is, right? Uh, <laughs> but I, I think questions. that, um, well, obviously these articles of impeachment aren't going to stick in the Senate, you said, right? Because it's mostly Republican. I mean, you know, on paper. Yeah, you need six uh, votes in the Senate to convict and remove from office. There are six or seven, you know, if you include the independent aligned uh, Republican candidates, seven of them right. out yeah. of the nine, you need two thirds. Uh, so it's un uh, it's unlikely. You heard the Lieutenant Governor Arna Palacio say that yesterday. And as we said in the story, the ultimate referendum will Maybe probably be in November. Right. And so if none of this stuff sticks at this uh, in this trial setting, I think the conversation tone changes to not what has happened, but what these candidates want to happen are uh, for the NMI. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I got to say, when we had uh, Representative Sablon and uh, Representative uh, Stavler on, I felt they were a little short on projecting their plans for the future. And uh, like with these these teams running against, uh, I mean, they're all running against each other, but running against Governor Ralph Torres. Like I said, um, I'm not saying the sh impeachment ship has sailed yet. But by the time you get deep into the campaign uh, season, if it's shot down to the seven, Senate level, you got to wonder how much gravity talking about these things uh, is going to have. Right. I can't help but also see some parallels to some of the national stories. I mean, is this an election to vote out Governor Ralph Torres or is this an election to vote in your candidate? So uh, we'll see you know what voters have to say and the uh lots of people in the public comments uh, section of the impeachment trial of the impeachment vote in the house were also sharing how the representatives uh some of them saying the representatives should just wait until election day and not go through with the house a uh, vote but obviously that happened but there are you know folks who uh want ultimately quote unquote the people to decide uh, we did have some comments here uh micah comments in kuam is the most fair and fact-based news network Bar none. Thank you so much, uh, Micah. Jay Castro comments, and what have they done lately? Where is the lieutenant governor? Lately you see campaigns on Luta rather than being the lieutenant governor of the CNMI. Has anyone called his office to see if he's in or working for the people? Hey, don't bash me. Just asking questions. Uh, Vincent Torres, continue taking the high road, governor. Love you always. Uh, Carla, stay the course, gov. Uh, Jay, Tina and Layla is campaigning to Rota now. Do they apply? Did they apply for leave? Just asking. Instead of drafting bills to improve our COVID situation, they're busy campaigning. Just saying. Ken Marianas, continue doing the good work, Gov. We are thankful. Uh, Roger comments in. Stay focused, Governor. Don't stoop as low as Arnold. Keep up the great work in protecting our people. Uh, the governor's uh, is he the chief of staff? Will Castro? Will Castro is the chief of staff and the GOP campaign, campaign chair. Right. So he says the GOP platform will be rolled out soon. We'll be certainly keep the public informed in the days and weeks ahead. Okay. So, uh, oh, and Richard comments. Thank you, Governor. Flame emoji. Hashtag, that's my governor. Candace, awesome interview. Thank you, KUAM. Viva Governor Torres. Uh, yeah. So uh, Geraldine uh, Sablon also has some comments. Uh, Ken comments again. Thank you, KUAM, for giving the Gov the opportunity to be heard. He deserves to be heard, too. Well, we've asked him to come on uh, many times over the last uh, few months. And, I mean, we, we're glad that uh, he did. And I think, you know, maybe part of the reason for him waiting so long to come on was maybe he wanted to hear what everyone else had to say. Uh, did, so did you feel like you got some good responses to the questions you asked? 
or just responses? And those were the responses he gave. I don't know. <laughs> it is what it it's, is. Yeah, I, um, you know, and uh, we'll continue to ask those questions. Uh, it's Friday, nine forty-seven. Let's go ahead. And